do three bucks miles in the way. Ah, oh, this is run and ah, oh, so um, what was shit? Shit was happening, and I am having a time trying to remember what. So I um, hmm, the important thing is that we gotta remember is uh, is that thing. Ah, uh, where the hell is my makeup bag? Um, um, um the Tim Capello. Uh, concert at uh, Shitty Club in Detroit was excellent. Uh, there was a whole lot of nonsense while I was trying to get there, so I was able to get to the concert in spite of a three hour delay with Amtrak uh, from Ann Arbor to Detroit. And then what happens is, um, seriously, this is how we're doing it. Okay. Hey, that works, generally speaking. Okay, so, I was telling my friend Angela, I don't remember how it came up in conversation, where we were going on about, like, uh, Elder Goth superpowers or something. I think that was the topic of the conversation. I could, in theory, um, pause this and then scroll back up to, um, in Messenger and find the conversation and confirm what indeed it, we were going on about, wherein I brought this, wherein I brought up my extra super rare Elder Goth superpower. I think it was about Elder superpowers. I don't know. But it sounds like a conversation she and I would have <laughs> for a number of reasons. One of those reasons being we are both insufferable dorks. So, <laughs> like... <laughs> like, uh, like, like she, she seems so, you know, like collected and glamorous in her scripted videos, but in the live streams, if you ever catch her doing a live stream, um, I, I don't know, I think it's like once a month she does it thereabouts. But yeah, if you're ever able to catch her in a live stream, the, the, the fact that she is a dork definitely comes out, and if you... Uh, if you manage to befriend her and end up in a friendly conversation about all kinds of stuff and nonsense, uh, she's, she's even dorkier in real life. I don't know if I've shattered your illusions or not, but she, she'll hopefully agree with me in the comments. She's, a, she's agreed with me about lesser things before in the comments, so, um, uh... She doesn't necessarily chalk up her um, Elder Goth superpower, which is having great skin, so much to being an Elder Goth as it is working as an esthetician, you know, skincare specialist. Um, I forget exactly what certification you need for that, but uh, you do need to go to school to carry that title. It's not just something that you can learn on the job. So let's see, done the. Oh, right. That's what I brought my thing out for. God damn it. I forgot that my uh, my concealer pa palette is in my pouch. So so you may notice I am at a much uh, lower um, angle proportion to the door behind me in my bathroom, and the fact that you can see shit on the uh, from the vanity counter, um, and that is you know ankle still sprained. Uh, yes, I was standing the other day when I was taking that video for it, and I really should not have, and that is catching up with me, but, um, I, uh, I will definitely, I will definitely, uh, be on my feet a little bit less at Necto today, but, you know, if, uh, if Jay and all them play my songs, I gotta dance, so I'll just, um, I don't know. I'll just like put on my uh, my yoga socks under uh, under a pair of shoes. I can slip off and back on very easily. So, yeah, I'm just gonna finish up my foundation because, like a dumbass, I started it and I barely have the uh, the room on this camera for. Yeah, I had a uh, I had a guest here last night, and it was a very very good reason he was over and. Uh, and then, uh, it's not gonna go anywhere. He's, he's moving, um, later in the week. So it's one of those, you know, it's definitely a short-term <laughs> arrangement of sorts. Um, mentioned that in my Instagram 
stringing last night wherein I went, I ended up, like, it made me do it in increments of an hour at a time, and like I said, I, I was on, I was live streaming over Instagram for four hours, I felt like an idiot at the end, especially because the last two hours were mostly me whining about my ex, um, but, you know, it all, uh, not without reason, and, you know, it did, uh, it's been a year, I'm not, while I do still whine about him, it's because of the huge mess he left of my apartment, like, especially the goddamn bugs, and plus the fact that, um, you know, he, he left me in a pretty, in a pretty impressive depression hole, um, <laughs> let's put it that way, that was, that was really impressive, and I was just coming off of that, um, when, uh, when suddenly there was that, uh, that video I made, but, uh, but yeah, whatever, it's like, uh, what I'm actually whining about, uh, my ex is, uh, it's nowhere near as bad as uh, it was even earlier this year. Oh gosh, anybody who remembers those live streams, I mean, I guess we can go back and watch a couple. I've made a few, I've made a couple of them private, but there's a there's a couple where I'm I'm clearly like just suddenly in midstream because of all the bullshit Isaac left for me to deal with. Um, I just I know I just kind of had a breakdown. But my Elder Goth superpower, and as an Elder Goth, we all get one. And if you haven't gotten yours yet, then you should have sent in the coupon. Uh, um, on the back of an old, um, back issue of Propaganda Magazine, and, and you also need to do what? You need to send in the UPCs from three Bauhaus records. So, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm talking complete nonsense. But, uh, but... I can crimp my hair thoroughly in under 20 minutes. Well, under half an hour, definitely. It's been a while since I've done it, so I will say, I will say under 30 minutes. I, my best time so far is just at the 20 minute mark. So this should be thoroughly heated up. Yes, it is. Hon of a bitch. Do we want to see the smoke? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> this is just a thermal protection spray. That's what I was doing. So, yes. Okay. The time on the thing is now um, 22 and 51, 22 minutes and 53 seconds in. So... So, I would mentioned in the goth industrial club tag uh, that I did from after being tagged by Amy Necrotique. I didn't tag anybody in that. And the reason I didn't tag anybody in that is because I never know, like, like while I do know, I do have a good idea of about who um, actually watches my videos regularly based on how often they comment. Uh, at the same time, I never know who's going to be interested in actually doing whatever tags, and I don't want to, I don't know, I, I just, I, I just feel like I've wasted my time and theirs to tag them if it's something that they wouldn't actually want to do. So, uh, but yeah, it should be a given for all of the tag videos that I do, if you want to follow my lead from there, um, Feel free to do so, and feel free to link to your video in the comment of my tag video that I did. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I was mentioning uh, going to the goth club. I Yeah, it was Malice Underground in the late 90s in London with my brother-in-law on fake ID. He got me for my 14th birthday. Because, long story short, uh, I'm very unprecious about the whole trans thing. Oh. I just, I don't know. I just don't talk about it that much because it's not, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where, like, I mean, yeah, as far as, like, my healthcare goes, it's been a major part of my life these last 
12 years, but it's not something I necessarily talk about very much. So, uh, there's that. Son of a bitch. No, get away from my toothpaste. Because this is too hot. But, uh, but yeah, I'd mentioned the, uh, seeing the beautiful back combed up bouffants because that is how old I am. <laughs> well, more accurately, that's how old my parents were when I was born, so I, I still like, you know, any kind of big hair hairdo was just a bouffant by default, especially if it was uh, high up at the crown, toward the back of the crown, and then, um, and then what? Um, yeah, and then like long and flowing behind, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the, uh, the Bridget Bardot, Kate Pearson kind of, you know, like classic 60s bouffants to be a bouffant. It's just like, that's just what people about my age from the Midwest, or at least people about, you know, between my parents' age to like mid-young Gen Xers in general, so I'm like, I don't know, depending on, on, uh, on which book of American Generations you consult, I'm either at the youngest years for Generation X or I'm at the oldest years for Millennials. But, uh, but yeah, quite, I, uh, um, yeah, Angela and I were also talking about when I mentioned my superpower of being able to crimp my entire head of hair in as little as 20 minutes uh, when my hair is not that much shorter than hers. Um, while I do have a couple of thinner spots um, from uh, some just from age and gender, you know, like HRT and all of that, and some from uh, just like re recovering after bleaching my hair for years. Uh, so then what happens? Um, but my hair is generally not that much shorter than hers in length. Uh, and it says, uh, she was telling me that she took over an hour to do, to crimp her hair for a specific video she wanted to do and, you know, have her hair crimped for. Um, I don't remember which video that was, but it was a recent enough one. But yeah, like, all the... Uh, yeah. Angela's suggesting that while I'm talking, while I'm frying my hair, <laughs> after I just talked about recovering from years of bleaching, like a good ten years of bleaching, most of that, like, then, like, bleaching and toning it to white, so, yeah. Like, I'm surprised I still have hair at all after that, but, uh, then what was I saying? So, uh, but yeah, uh, her suggestion was to talk about the first time I'd seen anybody at the club with, like, especially crimped hair, and I kind of already did that, uh, so I've, like, kind of already given that story, um, but, uh, but um, but um, but um. Because, yeah, uh, especially mid-90s. And as I've said many times before, it was just kind of, hey, I'm already clocking in at maybe a little under five minutes, and I've done almost half of my head, <laughs> son of a bitch. But, uh, but yeah, like, oh. Uh, so, like, crimping irons weren't much of a thing throughout the whole decade, though they are very tightly associated with um, the gothic subculture in the 1990s, and that is in parts. Like, the only times I remember seeing commercials for crimping irons by, like, Con Air or Vidal Sassoon, I had a Vidal Sassoon crimping iron for the longest time, and it had these extra, um, wave plates to it, so it had the, uh, you know, the, your standard, uh, tight crimp plates, as seen here, but it also had um, wave plates and straightening plates that you could, like, take off, you know, like, interchange, uh, between the thing. It's like having three, um, heat irons in one. But I have no idea what happened to that. 
that is not something that I would have necessarily um, gotten rid of when, as with many trans people at the start of uh, transitioning uh, socially or medically, though in my case the, t the two instances were one and the same, because going back to me uh, doing the, the big naughty that basically everybody in certain large cities were doing in the in the 90s was uh you were getting into places underage with fake id because that's just what happened you know because there weren't like while there were probably a few all ages uh places doing something for various um niche genres and their related subcultures there weren't very many and um unlike now where it's fairly easy to find all ages events and uh then what happens um but yeah i obviously do not recommend going about this you know in the here and now because even if there are not an, even if there is not an all ages goth night in your area it's probably a lot easier to start one up than you think it is. Like, just find, like, some kind of youth center or something. Um, I know Ann Arbor, Ipsy area, there is the, um, 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 the neutral zone in downtown Ann Arbor, which is basically a club for, it's basically, uh, they have daytime events, but it's best known for being basically the, uh, nightclub for people too young to get into nightclubs like they have and they've had um dark alternative nights before i don't i don't remember if my friend justin did it there at first or if i'm thinking of somebody else but um but yeah, uh... i mentioned being trans and you know, I don't want to open up this whole can of worms about um, having the experience of one's assigned at birth gender before transitioning. I, I don't want to open up that can of worms. And plus, like, every trans person is going to have, like, very nuanced thoughts about this. Uh, we've just uh, passed 11 minutes here, and I'm about halfway done. So... I will, ugh. as we see, we've got a lot of new growth, but at the same time, so this is about the point where I, uh, I get the gator clips to shove everything out of the way. I'm missing a gator clip, and I want to know why. I want to know which cat sold it, and how much catnip did they get? Let's just say, since this is a public forum, though, it is, like, if you listen to a couple obsessive dipshits who've been ranting on about me since even before transitioning, it is not hard to find, uh, certain info about me pre-transition, especially from the online goth community of various forms. So, uh, so then what happens is, uh, yeah, like... If fake ID wasn't enough, you know, to get me into um, malice and slime light and shit when I was living with my sister and my brother-in-law, uh, it was the fact that, let's just say, there is a very good reason that for me, that medical and social transitioning were, you know, both began at the same time. Very few people would believe, even at a height of four foot seven, four foot eight, 
that somebody with that sort of build was 14. And the people who did believe that I was 14 were my family members, and I imagine most of my classmates, though I remember because I was held back in 8th grade for medical reasons. Long story short, I had an allergic reaction. That very nearly killed me. And I, uh, and recovering from that, because it was such a severe reaction, recovering from that kept me out of school for a little under three months, so. But, of course, you know, I had to repeat 8th grade in a tiny-ass town where I guess I just wasn't weird enough, you know, with mom being a later-in-life lesbian and uh, my dad with his own head injury that um, by certain cognitive tests um, reduced his brain function by a third and the fact that even though many people couldn't quite put their fingers on it. Looking back in retrospect, because we're talking the, the early mid-90s here. We're talking like early mid-90s, about like 93 thereabouts. Um, like I said, in retrospect, I was a conspicuously trans child, though at the time it would have been off most people's radars. Uh, nowadays, I think it's something that, had I said something about it, and, um, had I said something about it to, at the very least, classmates, if not, you know, the one or two sympathetic teachers I had, um, I think, since, uh, since trans issues are a bit more on the general, uh, consciousness these days, I think... I think a couple of things might have made some sense. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're getting, uh, uh, we're getting into 15 minutes here. I don't know if I've paused too much, uh, but I do, I do know it's going to be son of a bitch. Who is, oh my gosh. Uh, okay. That's, that's okay. So I got a robo dial from my doctor's office reminding me of my dermatology appointment on Thursday, which I thought I, I, I swear I hit decline because I knew what it was about, but it picked it up anyway, which turned off the camera, but thankfully, 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 uh, it did not, um, destroy the recording. So I was about 15 minutes in, uh, before all that stuff and nonsense happened. So let's see how much more time it takes me to finish this. Let's say I started 10 seconds ago. So uh, let's go with 20 seconds before. So that was 40 in when I was taking this, so now it's 51 in or something. Let's see, can we do it? Yes, all right. Uh, I forget what the hell else I was going on about before nonsense with my phone happened. Ah. I'm absolutely not asking for a digital camera. In theory, I have one, but it has no, um, it fell weird, and it's one of those inexpensive ones that, uh, you know, one of those inexpensive point-and-shoot ones that, uh, it is a very good camera, it's just the, uh, the, the, um, the viewfinder in back is very delicate, and it fell in the wrong way one time, and because I can't really see any image from the viewfinder in, you know, behind, you know, from, from the back of it, I don't use it much, and honestly, I've got, um, video editing software on my phone right now, so until I can get around to replacing the power supply on my desktop computer, I see no need for getting um, video editing software 
for my desktop. The laptops, I do not trust to be able to handle video editing in a significant way. So... Uh, where was I going with this? I went somewhere with something. Oh, uh, oh right, I was wrapping up a thought about how, um, you know, if I were like 14 nowadays, I think at the very least with my friends, and maybe the couple of sympathetic teachers I had while I was at school, um, I, I think, you know, I would have been, um, the fact that I was a conspicuously trans kid, uh, would, would not have been so hard for people to realize. But like I said, in a, in retrospect, as an adult, there were several things I did that's like, where I'm like, I, I... I didn't put up a fight about it, but I got the impression that, uh... You know, my stepmother, she always meant well when I was in junior high and high school. Uh... But I'm pretty damn sure that she was misgendering me until the day she died, even though I had made contact with her again for the first time since I was... For the first time since my dad died in 2002. Um, just like a week or so before his 60th birthday. Whereas, like, my, you know, so, and so I'd say my dad died at 60 because that sounds at least a little bit more impressive than, you know, he died a week and a half short of his 60th birthday. Much like with my best ex, Scott. His cat, Bob, died about six weeks shy of the, eh, maybe eight or nine weeks shy of his 20th birthday. But, um, but it's like, you know, it's a, he's a cat. Let's give him that extra couple of months. Nobody's gonna notice. Um, and like, uh, that whole like, um, a dog's, a year to a dog is like seven years to a human. Like that's not entirely accurate because if it was, uh, think about it because like, uh, dogs are at a mateable age when they're, before they're a year old, depending on the breed and general health of the dog, um, could be as young as six months. Uh, nine months is fairly typical for a bitch's first heat. And, um, uh, but yeah, six months is not unheard of. And, uh, and then what happens? Um, uh, males are a little closer to, like, um, eight to uh, ten months old when they can first start doing it. So let's say like nine months old is when most healthy dogs are physiologically old enough to breed. So if you're saying that, you know, a dog's age is absolutely equivalent, that a dog's year is absolutely equivalent to seven years on a human, first off, you know for a fact that's a goddamn lie, because <laughs> because while a few cases have existed over the course of recorded human history, the average seven-year-old child is nowhere near any de degree of physiological sexual maturity. So, yeah. Um... You know, like a more, um, like there's some more accurate, um, age calculation, um, online websites. Okay, so we've passed the 20 minute mark if we, because I did not touch my hair while I was trying to get the camera back going. I hope people can tell that, you know, I'm not, so we're definitely going to get in under the half hour mark. part of this because I'm out of practice, but then again, when you consider that uh, my crown is kind of patchy right now as far as length goes, um, for a lot of people, you know, that a lot of people just do sometimes have a shorter terminal length from the crown than on the back and sides. 
um, you know, or it's not uncommon for um, even kids to have this one little weird thin spot that, you know, around the, uh, the back of the crown. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily get, it doesn't always get any thinner as you get older either. It's got nothing to do with um, androgenic alopecia or anything uh, because it's been observed in um, both primary quote-unquote hormonal genders, um, you know, like primary. I mean, yes, the whole intersex thing is a thing, but it's like... It definitely, the whole, but, you know, the whole intersex thing being a thing definitely throws a monkey wrench into the notion that um, is touted by gender bioessentialist thinking that, you know, a woman is defined by her ability to carry a baby which is somehow necessarily always going to be known from the moment she is born when it's not like that's not anything that's ever really confirmed until about puberty and even then there's like still a wide range of um and plus like you know it is fundamentally sexist to it is fundamentally misogynistic to define a woman by whether or not she can carry babies. So, what else? Uh, but yeah, like a woman born with uh, complete androgen and sensitivity syndrome, also known as CAIS. I think there's a YouTuber who has that, or maybe it's some other intersex um, condition. But, uh, but yeah, you know, a woman with uh, CAIS... Um, she is almost always going to be assigned a female gender at birth based on apparent anatomy. And it's not going to be discovered until sometime in her early teens when certain, um, you know, when most young ladies have begun menstruating. You know, it's suddenly discovered, oh wait, she does not have a functioning uterus and ovaries. Instead, she's got internal testicles that never fully developed in into testicles. And, um, and stuff. Uh, okay, we're coming in on about 25 minutes still under half an hour. Yeah, I'm gonna end up with my hair crimped up like, uh, like in one of my featured photos on my personal Facebook. Not my, uh, not my music Facebook. You know, it's just a quick, sassy picture with me with my hair teased up. I can't remember if I had crimped it that day or not. You know, and then there's, uh, then there's, um, girls born with Turner Syndrome, where, you know, like, don't go by that episode of SVU. Oh, gosh. I've known a couple of women with Turner Syndrome. It is a mutation on the uh, sex chromosomes wherein, um, there we go. It is crimped. I can probably um, stand to comb it out so it gets that um, distinctive fluffy look. Um, 
But yeah, Turner Syndrome, like that episode of SVU that allegedly featured a character with Turner Syndrome, like that is not a typical manifestation of Turner Syndrome. I think they only like went that <sighs> generally fi like fictional route. It, it's a straight up fictional route they went in portraying Turner Syndrome um, where like it's so hard to find an actress. I, I can't think of any actresses who do have Turner Syndrome and could therefore make for a fair, you know, representation of a character who has Turner Syndrome. And, um, but uh, I think they went the route they did just because it's easier to cast a, an 11 year old to play a grown-ass woman who never developed secondary sex characteristics, which is, um, you know, something else. It's like, you know, if you've got Turner Syndrome, a lot of times it's not going to be discovered until puberty because, you know, um, the, uh, I don't know which, um, which, uh, um, biological parental chromosome to uh, blame, but it's it's like there's like one of them either the either the ovum or the spermzoa just does not have an X chromosome. So this means that the child is born with one X chromosome. There's never a case of zero Y um, chromosomal anomalies uh, because you need at least one X to develop you know, in utero, like, uh, zero Y, it, it, it's gonna be, it, it, it's gonna be, like, one of God's own abortions, so, <laughs> like, that is, that is not going to happen, it, um, at least as best as we can tell, it has never happened, so, there we are, my entire head of hair, head of hair was crimped in under half an hour. <laughs> this is my superpower, this is my, um, yeah, I have, a little bit of an advantage uh, currently because um, my 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 hair had uh, had suffered some serious breakage. But like you can see, like it is like it's not it's not like it's not like bald bald. I've got a I've also got a weird thin patch like right about here at my crown. But that's always been there. That's always been like a little thinner than the rest of my hair. It's just it needs to get its length back. It needs to get its length back. And it is coming back. It is, the length is coming back. You can see this. But, you know, I still, I followed it up, da up the whole entire length of the longest parts. So, like, no cheating involved here. Um, yeah, it's possible I take, uh, thicker, um, pieces to do this, uh, than most people tend to, but at the same time, it gets the job done, right? So, there we are. Under half an hour, hair crimped, and I don't know. I think that's it for this video. I don't know if I'm going to do any birthday vlogging at the uh, at the club, but uh, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I had something something else I was going to say. Let's see. I'd mentioned um, being at the club, and you know, as young as 14, and even though I was still like. Four, seven, four, eight, thereabouts. Like I had a, I had a, um, I had a period where like I barely grew anything like during my teens. But then, uh, or at least during my high school years, because you know, like eighteen, that's like by all technical, by like you know, linguistically, that is technically still a teenager. But uh, but also I've been on my own since I was seventeen. And anybody who you know think, oh well, you probably got your emancipation papers. Like no, I did not. Uh, in fact, my dad tried reporting me as a runaway. Um, long story short, so he could have them, you know, so he could use the legal system to abuse me, but that's another story for another time. But the important part that I need to follow that up with is that literally the cops told him that I have no juvenile record. They have no reason to treat me as a truant and, you know, like, uh, since, so, yeah, like, this was the December after I turned 17, and he tried to, like, he started this off with them, saying that I had just turned 17, and, you know, they asked for my birthday, and he gave them my birthday, which is, like, middle of July, obviously, and, you know, they're just like, okay, so your child is 17 and a half, 
with no juvenile record, and you've got the younger, you've got the you've got the younger kid who has such a juvenile record that uh, she is a ward of the state because the county courthouse does not trust you to be able to keep her act together, and you've got the older kid who, you know, at that time Ruby had moved to Lenaway County, uh, who has had the cops called on her several times, um, <laughs> uh, has spent more than a couple overnights in jail for her inability to keep her act together. So you want us to, uh, as far as, you know, and, you know, my, uh, uh, just because of his head injury, um, in addition to, um, losing about a third of his cognitive function, uh, he was also partially deaf in one ear, so he always had the volume. We, the cordless phone in the house had to have the volume at max, because, um, if we didn't keep it at max, or if we didn't turn it back up after our phone calls, um, you know, Dad was just going to turn it back up anyway, and then, like, find some, but, and then find who we could yell at, you know, for not turning the phone volume back up to make his life slightly easier. So, you know, he had the phone on max, which meant everybody else in the room, which at that time was my stepmother and one of my stepbrothers. I forget which one. Uh, it's not important, really. One, one of them has died anyway. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like... Uh, my stepbrother said to me that the cop just straight up told him, you know, it's like, no, like, you know, if we do, if we do bring this, this third child that we literally did not even know existed until just now, because that is what your family is like, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to tell them when we pick them up, you know, if you, if they want to file for emancipation papers, they don't ever have to go back to your home in the next, like, you know, six months and change between now and their 18th birthday. Like, you are not going to get what you want here. So, <laughs> so yeah, that is exactly why I've been on my own since I was 17, because, uh, because I, I had had enough, and a sympathetic sheriff's department in a podunk county that I still hate. I still hate that place. I'm always going to hate that place. People keep telling me, oh, it's so much better since... I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, you just forgive that kind of emotional trauma that, you know, associated with a place overnight. So it's like, but yeah, um, so yeah, that's why I've been on my own since I was 17. Oh, I just now noticed exactly how much of that toward the end did not save. Uh, it's been about a week since I shot that video, so yay, I'm, 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 I've had my third 40th birthday party, and, um... Yeah, that's about it. That's about it. But yeah, I can indeed crimp my hair, entire head, in under 25 minutes. Um, hi, cat. Um, please. Um, I'm sure one of these days I could start getting used to doing it all the time again, or at least regularly again. But, um, but, um, but, um, but, um. Okay, that's about it. Um, bats and kisses and all of that, and... I don't know, I'm just having a, uh, I gotta finish the cleaning of the kitchen, but, yeah, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't put up a, I haven't, it took me so long to do this one, uh, just because, I don't know, I've, I've been, it's, it's been a little melancholy, and, uh, but also, like, um, last, last week, the, uh, the, the, the 21st through, like, 23rd, I was just, like, on this, this, like, complete, like, this, just so giddy, because, I don't know, that's, I, I, if, if you weren't there on Instagram, I'm sorry, but, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just still enjoying myself, um, the, uh, the, the, the beautiful divorcee I met who is, uh, going back to his home in Wales, well, his hometown in Wales, um, because being divorcee, and if you ever visit Michigan again, it's probably not going to be for another couple years, and, um, and yes, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know why I, because shit always happens, right, and, but it's okay. It's okay. So, bats and kisses, and take care of yourselves, and all of that, and wish me luck on the kitchen. Those carpets were supposed to be shampooed today, but 
somebody up and changed the date on me without informing me. So, yeah, real happy with that. All right, take care. Bye-bye.